Hi guys, welcome to the channel of love. So I feel the energy of not showing our faces at the moment. Uh, I don't know if that's avoidance or embarrassment. It's the energy of um, feeling nervous about actually seeing someone, facing someone, uh, eye contact. Anyway, so I'm not showing my face for now. I imagine later on I will do though. I've got some cards. Um, the Tarot of Sexual Magic. Both of the decks of the Lovers Oracle, the Romance Angels, the Enchanted Map, and the Sacred Spirit Reading Cards. And I'm sitting here like spinning my earring in my ear. Okay, it's like just turning it. <laughs> Let's have a look at these cards. Okay, the Tarot of Sexual Magic. Bottom of the deck is the Four of Wands. I can describe the image to you if you like. There's a man sitting on a swing, uh, like a, a wooden swing that's uh, hanging from a tree. And he's naked and he has a, a feminine who is um, sitting on his lap, straddling him. Uh, should we say reverse cowgirl? <laughs> okay. And he looks like he's having a, a very nice time. And she's grabbing her own breasts. He's a... Uh, He's controlling the movement of her hips with his hands. And there's a flame that's uh, very much a flame, a torch that's uh, beside them, that's dug in the ground. Okay? And it's uh, burning bright. It's burning bright. It's taken to like the Olympic torch. Okay. Running through the streets with the torch. Now taken to like the nursery rhyme, uh, Jack be nimble, Jack be quick, Jack jumped over the candlestick. Okay, I've got a card. It's justice. There's a feminine here. Um, I'm not. I'm not too sure. Um, I think she's on drugs. All I keep singing this morning is, I'm a baseline junkie. <laughs> I'm a baseline junkie. It's like, seriously? I have to keep saying to myself, stop singing that. I'm a baseline junkie. I've just shared the um, video on the uh, community tab. And it talks about, you know, uh, not needing to be on drugs. And uh, this feminine does look like she is on some kind of uh, trip. Okay, she is holding the sword. You can say it's the Ace of Swords, and there's a snake that's uh, coiling up the the blade. In in her other hand, she holds some scales, and I think they might. I'm not sure what the scales are. I'm not sure what the scales are. I'm not sure what's in the scales. I was taken to like opium. Okay, this makes this feminine high. She's got like little uh, butterfly, fairy wings, high as a kite. What I'll do, guys, is I'll try and take a screenshot of these cards and uh, put them as the thumbnail. Especially the tarot cards. Justice. <clears throat> I'd say that this is a junkie. I feel in a way she's wearing like a Cinderella gown, but uh, half of it's like kind of missing. I feel like she's waiting to go to the ball. It's a bit, bit of a Cinderella energy here. So I feel the way that this feminine lifts her spirits is to uh, indulge in drugs. Oh, okay. We've got the Knight of Swords here. This is a dominatrix here, but it's a masculine. He's got the whip out. This takes me more to the first energy I spoke about with the, um, the Four of Wands being on the swing. 
very different contrast in energy here because this one's all full of passion fired with um natural instinct i feel this is the divine masculine with the divine feminine here there's a couple of people in the doorway looking in looking in on looking in on looking in on them <laughs> Okay, I've noticed that the door opens outwards rather than inwards. Um, very interesting energy. I feel this masculine so full of passion and this karmic energy here relies on drugs to keep her satisfied when there is the energy of the divine masculine here wanting... Um, Wanting to understand why this feminine's not fulfilled or satisfied when he has a lot to offer. I felt the energy of this feminine, this karmic feminine here, being shocked if she kind of knew this other side of the masculine here. Very domineering energy. I was actually going to just stop pulling now the cards. I'll stop pulling the hair. Unless this feminine needs to be under the influence of drugs to be able to <clears throat> be submissive. Okay, show me the bottom of the deck now, is it? No, why is this card turned over? There's another card that was turned over. The bottom of the deck is the Nine of Wands. This feminine's clingy. To this masculine but i feel this masculine wants to go he wants to go to his flame i feel where he can be in charge the energy of it can't be pleasant living in an environment where there's this feminine who's so unhappy that she needs to um intoxify herself with substances when this masculine's wanting to provide for all her needs so it's like this masculine doesn't make her happy um the moon energy is the other card so there's two feminines two masculines i felt this this was a contrast here secrets It's like a lobster here going for the pearl that's in the oyster, in the oyster shell. I don't feel this karmic energy is really uh, wanting to entertain anything kinky. Um, she'd rather have some other substance in her <laughs> oh dear okay well let me see if i can make some more sense of these cards here so we have the justice card here let me just um have a little rerun we're gonna have a rerun i've got the justice card there's a feminine here i feel that she is um she's either drunk or on drugs it could be both. Even drugs like um, antidepressants. Something that she needs to get her through the day. And I feel there's this masculine here and he can't quite comprehend why she's not happy and satisfied. Why he could not make her happy. Like why she's so depressed. He does his best. But they like different things. He likes to be domineering and role playing. And I feel that if she does do this, it's when she's under the influence. That he wants something that's natural, not someone who's uh, high as a kite. I feel the masculine wants to speak to this feminine about this. She's ever so clingy.
Okay. Let's have a look at the Lovers Oracle. The first deck of the Lovers Oracle. <clears throat> Love is an angel disguised as lust. And true love is like a ghost who everyone talks about, but few have seen. I feel the masculine here is most definitely lusting after the divine feminine. She is an angel in comparison to this other one. True love is like a ghost, we've all heard of it, who everyone talks about, but few have seen. And I feel the contrast here is allowing the Divine Masculine to see um, what true love is. In true love, you want what is best for the other person. In romantic love, you only want the other person. So true love wanting what's best for the other person, I feel that uh, this couple here need to set each other free. This karmic feminine really needs to sort out um, her emotional or mental state. I feel she needs to be weaned off of the drugs, but I don't feel it's this masculine's role to do that. It's too close to home. It's like rarely can you help the ones that you're closest to because there's too much emotional involvement, attachment to it. So this feminine needs a third party uh, to step in. That could be in the form of actually another person, another man. And she's put herself into a third party situation. So in true love, you want what is best for the other person. In romantic love, you only want the other person. And I feel this feminine maybe gets a bit romantic, like I said, when she's under the influence. Okay, let's have a look at the enchanted map. The energy of the moon card here, we have two masculines and two feminines. One's holding a glass in the end, the other one's holding a mirror. And I feel this karmic energy here, she will attract, like attracts like. Because the divine masculine, he is uh, feeling more attracted towards his uh, divine true love connection. His mirror. And with that full moon energy there, all coming in over the Easter weekend, preparing for the resurrection. Sad embrace in reverse, card number 45. Loss is a part of life. Let go and allow time to heal you. Are you suffering over your suffering? Do you feel that life is treating you unfairly and that you've been robbed or deprived of what you're entitled to? Do you long for a love that eludes you or the success that has been bestowed upon others? Righteous anger and a sense of entitlement lead to a trap of ego. Your suffering and loss will pass if you let them. If you hold on to your perception of unfairness, then you'll find yourself in its tight grip, unable to breathe freely. Okay, and I do feel the bottom of the deck here with the nine of wands, this feminine does have you like, she's trying to keep a tight grip on you. This karmic feminine. <clears throat> so if you hold on to your perception of unfairness, then you'll find yourself in its tight grip, unable to breathe freely. The only solution is to drop your victim stance 
and embrace the sadness so that it may dissipate naturally in time. Trials and tribulations build character, which is its own gift. Find something to be grateful for and take responsibility for your part in all matters. However painful it may be to sit with your sadness, remember that you are loved and will not be left adrift forever. Have faith for this too shall pass. You are not a victim, only a traveller on a hero's journey. It's okay to be disappointed for now, but know that someday you'll look back and see great value in this experience. Let's go to the Romance Angels. Just have a little refreshment first. <laughs> Seeing as I've got two decks of the Lovers Oracle, I feel it's a very contrasted reading here, um, which you will gain clarity through. By viewing the contrast, the things that uh, you don't really like, you send out those rocket of desires for the things that you do want, which is the opposite of uh, what you're experiencing. So by witnessing what you don't like, you find clarity in what you do like. The Romance Angels want to say to you that it's safe for you to love. Open your heart to give and receive the highest energy of all. This card indicates that you're protecting your heart from hurt because of painful relationship experiences. However, the angels can only bring as much romance as you're allowing inside. If you have a shield around your heart, how is love to get in? A closed heart repels the sensitive partner you're trying to attract. Following your inner guidance will protect you and simultaneously allow you to feel loved and loving. Trust your intuition. Okay, it says trust your intuitive senses with respect to other people's trustworthiness and open your heart to those who are kind and gentle. Ask the angels to bring caring individuals, including a romantic partner, into your life and they'll do so, provided that you listen to and follow their guidance. Well, let me pull another card then. It's worth waiting for. Divine timing is at work in your love life. Your soulmate relationship requires patience as there are many factors involved. Your soulmate's free will choices are beyond you. Okay, they'll be on you. <laughs> your soulmate relationship requires patience as there are many factors involved. Your soulmate's free will choices are beyond your or the angel's control, as is the readiness of both of you for true love. This card comes to you as a reminder that this relationship is worth waiting for. Divine timing is a universal law that is always in operation. It is the flow of everything. If we try to impose our human will and force things to happen, we become out of sync with nature and experience blockages. Similarly, if we fret, when will I meet my soulmate? We put worry energy out into the universe. The romance angels have heard and answered your prayers for a soulmate and they are working behind the scenes to bring this to you. Your role is to listen to and follow your intuition, even if it seems unrelated to your desire. Your intuition is like a guide dog, leading you along the path of answered prayers. Follow your intuition and trust in the timing of the relationship. 
Well, let's go to the Lover's Oracle now. The other deck of the Lover's Oracle. I feel when this reading, this karmic energy and the Divine Masculine are both really desiring and looking for true love. It's just not with each other. I believe the Divine Masculine has met his true love. And this is what he is, um, he's believing now. It's like now that he's had the opportunity to experience both sides of the equation. Okay, let's have a look at these cards. There's a new beginning, a new adventure awaits. Embrace it and live your dreams passionately. A new beginning. One more card. Reflection. Give each other some space at the moment. Trust and have faith that all will work out for the best. One more card, please. We've got two. Transformation. Your relationship with one another is about to deepen. Love conquers and transforms all things. Look deep within your heart and you will feel my love. My love for you is as deep as the ocean. And the bottom of the deck. Close your eyes and tell yourself that you deserve to feel joyful. You can allow joy into your life regardless of the circumstances you currently find yourself in. So close your eyes and tell yourself that you deserve to feel joyful. You can allow joy into your life regardless of the circumstances you currently find yourself in. We should finish with a sacred, sacred spirit reading card for this reading. Third Eye Vision, card number 36, Reclaim Your Mind. I felt like um, the energy from yesterday, well, it was leap time yesterday, Divine Masculine, and I feel that you kind of bottled it and didn't take that leap of faith. Well, Divine Timing is at work here. Um, so it's like every day you just become more and more enlightened regarding this situation. Your third eye is opening up more and more so that you can clearly see the truth. Card number 36. I'm a baseline junkie. <laughs> Liberate your vulnerability and reclaim your mind. That word vulnerability has been coming up a lot um, just in my mind uh, last week. Well, it might have been early on in this week. What day are we on? We're on Thursday today. It would have been this week. Well, I kept hearing it was about uh, you feeling vulnerable. So liberate your vulnerability and reclaim your mind. The third eye chakra is located along the brow line with its axis point between the eyes. Every individual has a third eye, but not all choose to open. In ancient times and across different cultures, the third eye was an asset. The ancient Egyptians, Greeks and Hindus all viewed the third eye and, pe and how do I pronounce this word? Pineal gland, pineal, pineal gland <laughs> as a gateway to the heavens, expanding consciousness and higher wisdom. Known in San Sanskrit as Ajna, its meaning is command, and perceiving. This multi-dimensional door allows individuals glimpses into different realms. And I said about you experiencing or seeing both sides of the equation. So this multi-dimensional door allows individuals glimpses into different realms as well as remote viewing, distant healing, visionary experiences and energetic practices. Using third eye vision requires careful practice. Psychic debris, energetic distortions 
and imbalanced frequencies can stick to the third eye chakra and to an individual's aura and energy bodies. This can leave you with emotional disturbance, insomnia or nightmares, a negative outlook on life or mysterious physical aches, pains or illness. Currently, you may be feeling forgetful, moody and extremely sensitive to smells, lights and taste. Visual stimulation is overpowering. That could be why we are hiding. That's what I felt, the energy of uh, why are we hiding our faces. So visual stimulation is overpowering. Now is the time to reclaim your mind. Satisfy your needs first instead of people pleasing. Right now, feelings of vulnerability will rise to the surface. Fear of self-exposure and judgment will influence your current relationships. Try to avoid crowds and busy places as collective mental energy will influence your state of mind. Continually trying to protect yourself from harsh criticism and personal judgments will keep you in a defensive mindset and influence your decision making. Intuitively, don't rush into a third eye experiences. Experience. Okay. Intuitively, don't rush into a third eye experience. Take it slow and seek a suitable teacher to avoid spiritual risks. If you wish to intensify or gain third eye visions more regularly, activate and decalcify your pineal, pe I just can't say this word, can I? Pineal gland. So activate and decalcify your pineal gland through visualized meditation. Okay, your affirmation, I see clearly and accurately through my mind's eye. And let's leave it there for this reading. 27 minutes, 13 seconds. I will catch up with you guys later. Until then, take care. Much love. Bye for now.